Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 17.4.1 revision or re-release to the public. iOS 17.4.1 revision is available around the world at the same time for everyone, but it's only available from installing it via a computer. So we'll talk about that in a moment, and Apple also released iPadOS 17.4.1 the exact same way. Now, like I said, you have to install this with a computer. So what that means is if you're on a Mac, you use the Finder, or if you're on Windows, you use iTunes or their new device management tool. So you won't actually see it when you go to software update and check for an update. It's just not there and won't show up for you. Instead, you actually have to connect it to a Mac or PC and then install it this way using the Finder that I have on the right. And it installs the entire OS again at 8.22 gigabytes. So it's a very large install since it's reinstalling and overwriting everything. Shouldn't take up additional storage, but it is a very large install. So if you check for an update, you won't see any update over the air. And if we go into our settings and then general and then about, once you've installed it, you'll see the new build number here. On the left is the old one, 21E236. The new one is 21E237. That's the latest build. And that would bring you up to the latest version where it says this update includes improvements and bug fixes for your iPhone. There is not a modem update coming from 17.4.1 to 17.4.1 revision. And as far as new features, well, there doesn't appear to be anything different as far as bug fixes or anything at all. So the wallpaper dimming bug is still there and other issues may still be there. However, some had speculated that this might be an update for the iPads that they should maybe announce this week or sometime in April. However, Aaron P613 has found there's no evidence of this so far on X. And you can see it says new iPads are not mentioned here. So they're not mentioned at all. There's also been some reports spotted that had iOS 17.4 or 17.4.1, possibly causing a boot loop for some, but no one has reported it to me so far. And maybe this is actually to fix an issue when you're restoring, since it's only available on Finder or iTunes at this point. So maybe you went to restore, it was causing a problem, and they needed to fix something in that and made that available if you needed to install it this way, if you had a problem. Otherwise, it doesn't appear to be any big issues there. Apple also started signing iOS 17.3.1 again earlier on, so maybe that's why if people were having issues, they could downgrade them to that version to allow people to install an older version that wasn't having the boot loop, then they could upgrade again from there. Again, no one reported that to me though. As far as security updates, well, if we go to Apple's website, you'll see on their security update website, that they actually updated this a few days after the release of iOS 17.4.1 initially. And it has a couple different security updates in it. So if you haven't seen this already, it was updated when they released Mac OS 14.4.1 and it fixes two issues, one with core media and one with WebRTC, where the impact or issue was processing an image may lead to arbitrary code execution. It's the same on both. And then they fixed it with an out of bounds write issue was addressed with improved input validation. So those are the latest security updates with that. And as far as anything else in this update, well, it looks very minor. It may be specific to the issue people were having with possible boot loops. Also, some people have asked, is it because Apple has this phishing attack that's actually going on that Mac rumors reported on? It actually involves password reset requests, but it doesn't appear that Apple has patched this just yet. And if they have, it's possible it's already in it, but Apple hasn't commented on it. So I don't think they would have patched it that quickly. I could be wrong, but at this point, it looks like it's probably not fixing this. And this should be something you're cautious of if you haven't seen this already. I'll link to this in the description below. As far as any other announcements or releases, well, Apple yesterday announced WWDC 2024, which is where we'll see iOS 18 and other updates. So if we scroll down, it's from June 10th to the 14th. I did a separate video on what to expect there as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. As far as the iOS 17.5 beta one release, I would expect that probably as soon as today, possibly later this week, but I think it'll be today or tomorrow with the latest where we'll probably have some new features maybe some things that they bring back, whether that's the stopwatch for the dynamic island or something else. If we go in and start that in previous betas of iOS 17.4, they had that, but they removed it. So maybe we'll see it in 17.5 along with other features as well. But the majority of features are being pushed probably to iOS 18 as Apple's focusing on that. As far as performance, it's hard to say if it's changed at all as it feels exactly the same with ProMotion and everything else, nice and smooth as you would expect. However, Geekbench scores show a good improvement here. So if we go into benchmarks, 
We'll go into Geekbench 6. I ran this this morning and we had 2,948 for single core, 7,349 for multi-core. That's actually quite an improvement just based on what we had before, where it's about a 300 point improvement on multi-core score and about 50 or more or so on the single core score. So definitely an improvement there. Nothing huge, but it's just something that's a little bit different. As far as the overall heat of the device, many of you are curious if it's going to improve anything there. While most people say that it was improved already with 17.4.1, the re-release or revision seems to be about the same. After I installed it, since it's plugged into a computer, of course it's charging at the same time. It's going to heat up a little bit, that's just natural, but it cooled down quickly after I unplugged it. Everything seems to be right where it should be, no overheat messages or anything like that. As far as the overall battery health and battery life, if we go to battery, battery health, you'll see I have 144 cycles on the battery and I'm down to 99% capacity, well within what we should be at this point of time. Now, as far as my battery life, if we go and take a look at yesterday, I had four hours and 47 minutes of screen active time at seven hours and 11 minutes of screen idle time that gave me, well, or used about 75% of the battery leaving about 25%. So it's actually improving since the install of 17.4.1 for me. You'll see a few days ago, I only had about two hours of screen active time using about 60%. So overall it seems to be improving and hopefully it continues to do that. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.4.1 re-release or 17.4.1 revision, I would say probably not. If you want to, you can with a Mac or Windows computer. Otherwise, there's not really a reason to rush out and do that. Also, if you want to test the betas, those should be out pretty soon, I would imagine. So I wouldn't really rush to install that unless maybe you want to try and solve an issue or you were someone having a boot loop problem. Let me know if you had that issue in the comments below. Now, if you've noticed anything different with iOS 17.4.1 revision, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.